This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. <laughs> Hey guys, this is the Awesome Chat. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. And this is a show where we talk with awesome people doing techie and creative and awesome things all around the Pittsburgh area and outside sometimes every once in a while. This week we got definitely somebody local and in the podcasting world. But first, please go check out everything going on with the Awesome Chat and the Awesome Cast over at AwesomeCast.com. You subscribe to the Awesome Chat on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the Awesome Cast Facebook and YouTube page. Please support the show uh, if you would like over at the Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Uh, thank you to those that who d- do support the show and literally help keep the lights on here in the studio. Uh, uh, so with me, I always love uh, having other podcasters talk about podcasting on our podcast. And this week is no exception as Aaron Watson of Going Deep with Aaron Watson goes deep with us on this awesome chat. How you doing? I'm doing well. Sounds like we're going to get meta. <laughs> Probably a little bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> so welcome to our podcast about your podcast. So tell us about your podcast. Yeah, so I started podcasting about two years ago. Um, my show is called Going Deep with Aaron Watson. We've done more than 250 episodes, been downloaded in more than 120 countries. And the core idea, I started when I was 23, fresh out of the University of Pittsburgh. The core idea was I felt like I was the kid who did everything right. I got good grades in school. I you know, went to the Career Resource Center, graduated college in four years, Um and kind of didn't necessarily really like the job prospects that were presented to me uh, upon graduation. And so what I want to do with the show is interview people, not just in Pittsburgh, but hopefully highlighting some people in Pittsburgh that are kind of blazing unconventional career paths, unpacking how those work. Mm -hmm. And then basically through that form of storytelling, be able to provide some guidance and wisdom to my generation, next generation, or really anyone who's just not content in their job Mm -hmm. to be able to kind of blaze their own trail and understand that there isn't necessarily a stair step ladder approach to the careers that a lot of people aspire to. That's awesome. Yeah. And I was looking, you got a pretty amazing uh, list of people that you've conversed with over the, uh, anytime I see Robert Scoble come up, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's always interesting. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's a tech blogger. We, we mm-hmm. talked about AR, the, the AR kit. That's kind of the hot thing on iPhone right now. He was talking about that a year ago and trying yeah. to sound the alarm for <laughs> big corporations. No, that's just how they're going to have to market themselves. Coming pretty soon. To be fair. He also said that we were going to have a very clear iPhone uh, that came out this month. And I was pretty off the mark on that one. True. <laughs> true, true, but, true. But still, he's the guy, he's always ahead of the curve on these things and looking at these new technologies. Yeah. He's the one that classically had the Google glass in the shower for yep. some reason. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, so you know, you're you're kind of looking at people, uh, kind of that, that are thinking outside the box for this kind of thing. Yeah. Um. What you know, what kind of surprises, um, since you've kind of started this podcast, uh, have you seen? Well, in general, what's surprising, and it's only surprising because it's not necessarily the story we're told from the teachers or the career counselors that we usually have access to is that the really, really cool stuff is a long and arduous process. There's, mm-hmm. there's kind of a perception when someone enters the public conversation that, oh, they're this overnight sensation. They came out of nowhere to be a big deal. And the more you dig into their story, like even someone who was maybe a teen, uh, teen bobber, like, you know, emerged at a very young age, they were playing guitar as like a four-year-old or Tiger Woods who's hitting golf balls as a three-year-old. Yeah. And so... When you internalize that story, at first that was really surprising. That was almost tough to swallow because a lot of people were impatient regardless of how old they are, but particularly when you're used to the digital technology, when you're used to having anything you want at the click of a button or you know, I can summon an Uber and it'll be here in five minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, that's very counterintuitive, but 
you know, you, you continue to unpack these stories. Like one of my favorite ones I always talk about is Barry Ritholtz is a really big finance blogger. He has a Bloomberg column, a Washington Post column, a wealth management company in Manhattan. And he gets more than a million uniques on his blog on a, month, on a monthly basis. Jeez. And you hear that. You even said just geez audibly there, like knowing those numbers. But how it started was in 1999, he took really diligent notes on the, on, on the trading floor where he was working. And the other guys on the floor with him wanted access to the notes. They got passed around. He recognized that, you know, some people were interested in this and he put up a shitty GeoCities website. <laughs> and which, which is now not around and uh, the entire like service is on a floppy somewhere. <laughs> right. So the, and then, you know, more than 10 years later, he's this overnight sensation as a media, co- as a finance commentator in the media. And no one really cares to look at all the work that he put in all the foundation that he laid Mm. and that just gets replicated over and over and over again with every single story you hear and some some people are in the midst of that part of the journey where they haven't blown up yet but i know they're about to um like adam harridan who's going to be at my my event this january the going deep summit um he's someone who's just laying the groundwork and he is going to be you know someone with national if not international claim in the future Mm -hmm. I, i genuinely believe that and he's just grinding away putting in putting in the work he has a, a kind of small niche culty following but that's going to explode in the near future absolutely so so you know uh, you know this is you know a lot of uh, you know us work in the how do we find that audience and things like that and and grind away at things like that yeah. um and and then we look at people and are like oh how did you know i think a lot of people look like the i just of the world and everything in like the media space and we're like oh man she just kind of blew up it's like no she was working on this stuff for a long long before that um and it sounds like you know as far as the people you're seeing you know there's a, the, the seeing where the puck is going you're seeing kind of where all these people are going yeah and kind of are, are seeing them on the horizon it seems yeah absolutely and and just touching on that number phenomenon because that that kind of ties into the impatience thing but there's also just a a need for people to recognize how much they have in the moment. So mm-hmm. th- it, we're naturally going to be aspirational. We're naturally going to say, "Oh, I want to, I want to shoot and try to be up here eventually." But Russ Roberts, who came on the show, is the host of Econ Talk. He is a very well-known uh, personality within the the realm of economics, and he has tens of thousands of followers, if not more, maybe even hundreds of thousands now for his podcast. But when he started it, and he started it like way back, like 2008 or seven, when nobody was podcasting. Um, When he started it, he got like 100 or 200 people, which now is like, you know, frustrating for a lot of people if they're (laughs) they're kind of stuck at that plateau. Yeah. And what he said is, I got that. And, you know, that's more people than I get in one of my lecture halls. My lecture hall is 45 people. And this is a brilliant man who is a master of his field. And he's thankful for the opportunity for 200 people to listen to him. Mm -hmm. And so that perspective, you know, whether it's any show, like basically anyone who asked me to come on their show, I know that as long as there seems to be some uh, genuine authenticity in, in their request, um, I'm happy to do it. And, and that notion that, you know, I should be up here or I deserve some sort of th- like thing all the way up here and, and not being appreciative of where you are. If he can be appreciative of a 200 person audience, then what can't you be appreciative of? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I think there's a lot of power in that kind of idea, right? Yeah. Well, and, and, and kind of looking at those audiences. Uh, we said with podcasting, you know, hey, oh, I only got 50 views. I'm like, well, 50, 50 people will listen to you. Yeah. That's value. That's, that's important. You know, and now what do you do with that? You know, do you, do you get those 50 people to find another 50 people? Do you do you have a long, bigger conversation with those 50 people? Right. Yeah. So um, tell me a little bit. Let's see. You mentioned the Going Deep concert co- uh, conference as well. Uh, tell me how that came about. Yeah. So the so I have a Facebook group that's pretty active called Connection University. I've got the audience for the podcast and just in general people I engage with in social media and all the kind of events I go to around town. And what I was looking for the opportunity to do is to bring all these digital re- digital interactions into the real world. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that there's a, a few people that I've had on sh- on the show that particularly represent to me 
the real class of people in Pittsburgh that we need to be celebrating that are creative, that are entrepreneurial, not necessarily going to be the next Duolingo or, you know, whatever, $300 million exit sometime in the future, but they're building businesses, they're changing people's lives through their entre entrepreneurial endeavors and are, are really being successful at it. They are finding success. There are lessons that can be gleaned from them. And I know that there's a ton of people that I bump into all the time that aspire to something similar. And so the hope here is on January 27th at the Going Deep Summit to put those people on stage, but not only have them up on stage, have them down in the crowd, talking, interacting, connecting with everybody and sharing some of the lessons that they've learned, some of the key ideas that they want other people to grasp. We're also building a platform just where they can export their wisdom and, and their leadership and their speaking on to others. Um, Zach Slayback uh, and Ed Lattimore are two guys that every time I speak with them or, or listen to one of their shows or, or read their writing, I feel like I get smarter. And if Pittsburgh can continue to develop and be a source of culture being exported and not just that kind of internal bubble mm -hmm. that uh, can sometimes happen. I think that that's going to be really powerful. So we're going to have 250 people at the Kelly Strayhorn theater. Um, there's going to be all the, all the listeners of my show, the audiences of some of the, the guests there and just the other people in Pittsburgh who are ambitious trying to make things happen. Um, and it's, it's just going to be a lot of fun. That's awesome. Uh, tell me a little bit about, you know, uh, you know, kind of the early days of this podcast. You know, so you're over 250 interviews in on this thing. So you've been at it for a while. Yeah. Right. Uh, what was kind of the, the idea going into it? So I, I had the basic framework of I wanted to be really comfortable asking the kind of simple or dumb question, but also feeling comfortable in the sense that I had the, the base level of research to have a meaningful conversation with someone. And the, I mean, selfishly, the podcast opens you up and gives you access to people that you otherwise wouldn't have. Uh, like the picture for the event that you created is me with Peduto, the mayor of Pittsburgh, and he's not regularly granting 24 year olds half hour meetings, right? Mm -hmm. But because I had the show, I had the equipment, I brought in uh, Hannah Phillips to do photography, it, it became this thing that warranted a 30 minute conversation with the mayor of Pittsburgh. Right. And so partially there was the idea that like, I just want to show people that this is possible, show people that this can be done. Mm -hmm. And simultaneously, like I said, I, I just really wanted to unpack, you know, these people that when, if I just put up Barry Ritholtz's stats, like, like I said, he has all these visitors, he's all this stuff. And all, if all you ever get is that, credential that top title it feels unattainable it feels so far away mm -hmm. but then when you realize all of the kind of thankless hours that went into that then it becomes attainable and whether that's whether that's just influencing my personal circle of friends or one ring outward i still feel like that's a, a way i can make a, a meaningful impact that makes me feel good that's awesome. Uh, so, I mean, you know, you, you're, you're really kind of reaching out to, to a lot of these people and you say being interesting, uh, uh, you know, be, being, you know, a nice platform, you know, for, you know, to get a Peduto interview or, or anything like that. A lot of people have that kind of question at the beginning of like, oh, I want to have, I want to reach out and try to get this interview and talk to these people. Do you have any advice for those people that are kind of building their podcast platform, blog, whatever it is like that, 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 has problem reaching out to people like that. Well, the number the number one thing you have to recognize is that nobody bats a hundred percent or even fifty percent to to be honest, probably um, mm -hmm. until you reach some lofty lofty status. Mm -hmm. Most people are going to say no. When I I got a ton of no's when I was starting out. I can remember like of the twelve first emails I sent for like my first couple interviews. I think fifty percent of them didn't answer me. Uh, two people said no, and then I ended up getting you know three or four of my initial interviews out of that. Mm -hmm. So that's just the reality. And as soon as you can get comfortable with no, um, and you can kind of accept, it's not even really failure. Like to frame it up as failure makes it seem so much bigger than it is. It's just other people who are busy, who have other priorities, who can't do it right now. And mm -hmm. even, even their no doesn't mean never, it just means not right now, regardless of how they say it. And so when you have that perspective, you're willing to just continue asking and you have to be tactful. You have to be, um, you have to explain why it's a benefit for that person and not why it's about you. That's something I wasn't, I was okay at at first. I've gotten better, but now I see when, uh, you know, I get solicitations for people who want to come on my show or want to have me on a show. And sometimes it just, 
their whole message is kind of a, a bundle of self-serving ideals or concepts. Mm-hmm. And I can understand that. I can empathize with why their ask looks that way. But you have to be really, really focused on delivering value for others. And that just still comes back down to the show that you're creating. Are you creating a show that has stories that are interesting to people? Are you creating a show that is informative and educational for people? Or are you just kind of doing a self-serving um, <laughs> act or, or creation yourself? And, and just coming back to that idea, empathizing with the other person, understanding where their needs are, mm-hmm. and that practice of, of even just sitting, like this is, it sounds kind of ridiculous, but sit, don't look at any social media, don't be distracted by anything, and literally just sit and think for three minutes about what is important to that person Mm -hmm. and wrapping your mind around that before you make an ask or before you create something for them, it's going to make your work more informed. I say just a little bit of like, Hey, this is a platform that I think your audience is in or, or something like that. Right. Not only that, like, like, so, you know, if, if someone is really like a dream person for you, you probably know stuff by following them by other stuff, you know that they're busy. So I'm always very quick to say when I'm requesting an interview from someone that I perceive to be maybe a, a notch or two up the ladder than me, I say, Hey, it's only going to take 30 minutes. I can be in, or if I'm coming into someone's office, I'll be in and out within an hour. Yeah. And sometimes often, in fact, so like for Peduto, I was given a 30 minute slot for the interview. Yeah. And then afterwards, I think we spent 20 minutes like standing in his office, taking pictures, talking about the art on the wall, all this other stuff, because I was a professional. I was ready. I had a, a well-informed viewpoint t- from which I conducted the interview and he recognized that he appreciated that. And then he made more time for me. But when you go in once again with that kind of like, well, I need this much time. No, no, no. I can make this super simple, super easy for you. You're going to get access to a new audience. I'm going to be well prepared. That's another thing. Make, make the point that, Hey, a lot of people who do a lot of interviews, they get the same question over and over and over again. And if you can demonstrate, Hey, I can ask you a question that, or, or come with a viewpoint that's going to be unique and novel for your audience to hear from you. That's also going to be impactful for them. Absolutely. So being a little different, being informative, being, you know, having, having definitely a voice in it too. Right. Um, so, uh, uh, from that, I see that you, you, you sell software as, as the day job. <laughs> uh, not anymore. That was, that was, uh, wrapped up in May. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Are you a full-time podcaster now? Uh, <laughs> not exclusively. I do branding and marketing for another entrepreneur. I'm kind of awesome. behind the scenes with, uh, with his creation stuff, but it's, it's receding, receding till it's, it's basically just me. So basically, you know, I always interesting because I, I think the, the host often has to bring, you know, uh, it's more than just an interview because I think I think a lot of people that do like interview casts are, are kind of putting all their value in the guests. And really, the host has to have a lot of that, too. You know, the host you come with, um, you know, you, you exist in that space, you know, yeah. selling self, software, dealing with branding, you know, and that kind of entrepreneurial spirit. Right. Yeah, can you talk a little bit about that and how that lends to to you building this podcast? Absolutely. I mean, being able to talk sales is important and in, in being able to really, I think the, the biggest role for the interviewer is to connect the dots and, and have at least a concept or an avatar for who their listener is and sometimes decode things into a language that is understandable and maybe more relevant. So for example, I was actually uh, doing an interview today with a guy who is... Um, an investigative journalist has really gone deep on the world of healthcare and is talking about concepts like regulatory capture. Mm -hmm. And he wants to go all the way to like level three and explain precisely how regulatory capture works in the healthcare industry. What I need to do is make sure that we can connect the dot and explain what regular regulatory capture is maybe another example of it in the finance world Mm -hmm. and explain how, you know, often a regulator is expected to maybe hold back a business from being too powerful or control bad behavior. But when an organization gets too powerful, it can actually take control of the regulator and use it to institutionalize their own power. I was just saying that to (laughs) to make it clear for the audience who might not know, but just make that seamless. And so it's not interruptive for someone who maybe gets it, but helpful for the person who needs a little bit help, a little bit of help catching up. Again, kind of bringing that down to making sure your audience is covered. 
Yeah, absolutely. Because so, I mean, that, that's that's frustrating for we do we go without the technology uh, size where we just kind of go too deep. Yeah, and we go too deep. <laughs> Speaking of going deep, yeah, and uh, and we always have to reel it back. It's like, oh, whoa, 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 we know that. Please explain that for the audience. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. Um, so so tell us about uh, uh, where the podcast is is now. Where do you kind of see it going? Uh, aside from this, obviously, the summit coming up. Yeah, I mean, the summit is kind of the big thing that we're focused on right now. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's that's going to be at the end of January. So we still have a couple of months where we can get all our ducks in a row. But in terms of where it's going, um, we're probably moving in the direction of some more produced video content. Um, I don't know precisely in what form that looks like. But to, to be perfectly honest, I'm so heads down on the summit and just making sure that we have amazing speakers and that it's well organized. Um, and all the sponsors are, are happy that that's, that's the main thing I'm focused on right now. That's awesome. Uh, where can people check out the podcast? Um, well, it's everywhere. iTunes, Stitcher, whatever podcast app you may use. Uh, it is going deep with Aaron Watson. We've got more than 250 interviews. And if you want to connect with me on Twitter at Aaron Watson, 59 Facebook, wherever you want to find me or the website, I'm more than happy to make a specific recommendation for you. So one of the one of the toughest things with podcasting is kind of scaling or, or giving someone a toehold on which they can get involved. And maybe you're interested in finance, but you have no interest whatsoever in Ultimate Frisbee. I shouldn't send you to <laughs> the interview I did with the owner of the Dallas Roughnecks. I should sh- right. send you to the interview with Morgan Housel that I did. So. Sorry. I, I'm happy to make those type of recommendations and I'd love it if the audience of the awesome cast and awesome chat would uh, head on over to the going deep summit. I actually have a code. Uh, if they want to use Sorg as a code, they can get $15 off a ticket. That's awesome. <laughs> and, and by the way, I, I do have to shout out that because we, I was, I was peeking through it. I love your, your kind of introductory page um as well because it is again you have like it's under tech or if you don't know what a blockchain is stay away from that section over <laughs> there you know things like that you know that's what that's how you know uh, the robert you know robert scoble and andy ratcliffe really uh, uh bumped out you know uh, stepped up uh, you know left out for me as like oh wait hey man wait, those Big are names. those are yeah those are those are something that, that i know right you know versus i maybe don't know all the financial experts or anything like that so a really cool kind of introductory thing there so so it's not like oh god where do i start on 250 episodes right yeah. uh it's not just a giant list in itunes <laughs> yeah <laughs> so a really cool really cool concept there so go check it out thanks thank you so much aaron for joining me thank you so much for having me it's an honor Awesome. And go check him out and check out everything else we have going on. Uh, awesomecast.com. You can uh, check out the awesome chats there. A lot of great uh, conversations with, again, other podcasters and other people doing great things in the area, whether it be in theater or uh, or, or, or video games or, or technology startups. Uh, we talked to a little bit of everything as well. Uh, please check out all the conversations there. Uh, some of the best of Pittsburgh in those. Uh, please check out everything out. Uh, subscribe. Uh, and uh, thank you to my awesome guest you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com